Our two sites, Bowyer's Wood in Sussex and Downer Kerry here in Devon, in some ways couldn't be more different. The wood is a wood. There's a lot of forest management needing to take place there. Here, on the other hand, we're looking at grassland, we're looking at pasture, and into the future, we're looking at wet meadow. Now, the key thing is, you might think, we could just leave these places alone, let them go wild, and that would work to some extent. They would improve for wildlife but we've developed the ability to speed that process up. We know that if we make some quite dramatic interventions here, rescape this, then we can speed nature up. We can see that recovery happening a lot more quickly. That's what rewilding is really all about. We are looking at landscape scale restoration for all of the species that do live there, or more importantly, can live here at some point in the future. Now in our toolkit, when it comes to conservation, we've got lots of different tools. Rewilding, I would argue, in this time of urgency, when we're facing a biodiversity crisis in one of the most nature-depleted set of countries anywhere in the world, we really do need to get a move on. And rewilding, that type of landscape restoration, is at the forefront of what we should be doing. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here and in Sussex in Bowyer's Wood. Hey, it's my first time here. Give me the basics. What have we got? How big is it? And what's it been used for? It's about 50 acres of uh, sheep pasture. Um, the sheep were removed about six months ago, so it is recovering a little bit, but there's still not a huge amount of diversity in the meadow here. You've got the River Carey running along down here, um, which does have its own little population of beavers in it. Legal beavers. Legal beavers, yeah, yeah. as of last year, maybe. And they're doing good work, I presume. Yes, they are, yeah. And then on this side, you've got some nice kind of wet willow woodland. It's just the, the pasture itself that needs a bit of, bit of work. So it's been sheep pasture for some considerable time. It has, yeah. It's what we might yeah. call it improved, improved pasture. Well, that's what they call, right. yeah. call improved yeah. pasture. We uh, think we're going to improve it ourselves. We certainly are. OK, yeah. and what about the neighbours? Are the neighbours, have we got nice neighbours? We've, We've got nice neighbours down there, yeah. yeah. We have uh, a, a couple who have got a lovely bit of managed meadow down by the down by the water as well. So that's full of yellow rattle, full of other wildflowers. Uh, it's a very nice little patch of land down there. So hopefully we can work with them um, towards a, a yeah. nicer future for this bit of land. Excellent. Okay. Well, should we take a wander around? Chris and I will, you know, cast our eye and start fantasising, <laughs> and then we can talk about making some changes. Mm -hmm. Okay. First thing is we've got to get some diversity into this grass, haven't we? Hmm. Now you've dug a, a pit here. I can guess why that is, but that, tell us all. So we're just trying to see what the water's doing here, what we're dealing with underground. What it shows is that we're, we've got a lovely kind of base of clay. So whatever we dig is going to hold water. Above that, you have basically nothingness in the soil. It really is a symptom of overgrazing, of grazing with sheep pumped full of chemicals. There's no worms in there, there's nothing going on in there. So that really is a blank canvas um, mm. Mm. that we need to evolve and change. I'm thinking that basically some scrapes and lagoons here, even if they didn't hold water all year round, no would immediately diversify this in terms exactly. of botanical yeah. interest. This is such an obvious spot for a, a nice kind of big scrape, maybe deepening it in, in maybe one bit to form a pool, but then maybe some other smaller ponds dotted around just to join it all up. When we talk about scrapes, we're talking about getting a digger and maybe taking out, I don't know, two, three feet in old terms. Yeah, I don't know, not, sort of not a huge amount. 70 just, centimetres of, yeah. of soil, basically. And it's just exposing that that soil, um, at some points it might just be a boggy, muddy mess, um, but that's exactly what um, things like curlew might like or lapwing to, to come and feed in. Um, that's kind of what we're, what we're after when it comes to a scrape. Okay, so we dig the scrapes, uh, some deep, some shallow, some connected, a few little isolated ponds, quite a lot of that I, I think would be, would be useful. What about in terms of encouraging the, you know, the right plants to come back? Well, we have our polytunnel that we have back at um, the main site, on the Species Recovery Centre. Um, 
we're growing lots of devil's bit scabious there. We're growing things like greater tussock sedge, which is a perfect structural plant um, that, that farmers have spent thousands of years ripping out of every field. I think we start with them. I think we maybe get some green hay in, um, maybe from Doug across the road, um, who has that lovely green hay meadow already. We bring in some of his seeds um, just to get it going. This is great, isn't it? It's beautiful, I love hey, it in here. Look at Absolutely that. love it. Look at this tree, it's lovely, it's isn't it? It's falling down, but then carries on. That's what Willow does, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And what we can see here is that clearly up until recently, this would have been underwater. This yeah. is proper wet woodland, isn't it? Yeah, it's that water that we can manipulate and use to bring out into the field beyond and create mm -hmm. these lagoons and things. But I mean, this is going to be perfect for some key species, should we be able to get them. There's all warblers kicking off in here at the moment. Marsh tip? Marsh tips are already in here, yeah. Are they? Yeah. Willow tip would be a dream, of course. Mm -hmm. um, any of those sorts of species that like standing water all round, year round, you know, because of the um, enormous amount of invertebrates it offers, exactly. basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it might be that if we make this whole wetland system in the field there, the beavers come across here mm. and they start doing their thing in here, so creating even more wetland, um, cutting down some of these trees, allowing a bit more light in, um, the trees start coppicing of their own accord, it just becomes even more complex and, and more biodiverse. Mm. I mean, my thought is that one thing we could get to do in here is chuck in a load of nest boxes. Yeah. You, know. you find in this landscape that you do get these little gems that have held on that have never been worth cutting down and draining, and that's where things like marsh tits are holding on. Okay, we save the best to last perhaps. Should we go to the river now? We'll go to the river now, okay. yeah. Black poplar. Black poplar? Yes. Weren't they Britain's rarest tree or something? They are, point? yeah. Are they still? They still are, yeah. Are they? Okay. Here we are. In its impre well, hopefully, deer impregnable cage. And beaver. And beaver well. impregnable yes. cage, of course. Yeah. yeah, that's true. We want the beavers to have them eventually, but we want them to be very large trees by that time. Okay. Right, go on then. Sell me a black poplar. So, yeah, it's Britain's rarest tree. Okay, one point. Uh, it's, it's a poplar. Um, they grow very large, very tall. They quickly. like a wetland area. They go quickly. They grow quickly. Two yeah. points. Uh, they sucker, so they'll they produce really lots quickly. and lots and lots. Okay, so yeah. like three points. Beavers love them. Beavers love them, four points. Okay, uh, all right. And I just really like them. I mean, aspen is my favorite of the poplars, of yeah. all the trees, actually. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll take a black poplar. Yeah, now I'm with you yeah. on aspen, actually. Let's get, let's get to the other woodland. I'm pretty sure it's down here. And there's our friend, also wild garlic, bluebells. Yep. Goosegrass. Goosegrass. Hemlock, water drop warp. Yep. Wood dock. I mean, there's so much more in here than there was in the field. Yeah. And then you have this lovely little beach. Last time I was in here, there was an otter sprain oh, on the edge there. So nice. I put a camera trap on it and I did get otters running up and down. And this is clearly an area where, where it floods and comes through and it's kind of, we're on a meander here. So it's a very nice river actually. Mm. Doesn't show the symptoms as much of human influence and canalisation. Um, but e even here, the botanical diversity is significantly oh, yeah. greater than yeah. it is. I mean, it's look, we have Campion in here, Hemlock Water Drop. Well, I mean, I could go on. There's loads, it's a it? wetland and woodland assemblage, because it is both. It's stunning, yeah. And if we can just bring that out into the fields, that's a start as well. Ty, this doesn't really need fixing, does it? Not really? at all. This needs nothing. I mean, this is um, just... As it should be, yeah, really. I, it's I like a little this. corner that's been left to its own devices, isn't it? Yeah, never been worth farming or anything, so just been left and it's just managing itself perfectly. Like this willow that has clearly all been growing up straight and then just suddenly mm. fallen apart. Mm. That's what willow likes to do. I'm looking at that, I'm only thinking one thing. I bet you're thinking the same. Kingfish. It's got a kingfisher nesting bank written all over it, yeah, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely.
There we are. Oh yes, look love at that. that. Perfect beaver stick. The scalloping of the teeth on Indeed. there. Yeah. I just love the pattern though. Yeah. yeah. Made love by their incisors on there, it's lovely, isn't it? Nick, this is our new site here at Downer Kerry. It's pretty much a blank slate, to be fair. I mean, the river's lovely. There's some nice wet woodland, a little corner here, but the meadow area really needs some work, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's going to be the focus of our disruption, our kind of positive disruption, in a way. And, and we've really got to get those things done in the early stages. You don't want to be coming back onto the ground with big machinery. So straight out the gate, we'll be, we've started our test holes and Scott will be uh, doing his scrapes. All the heavy machinery will be coming on site soon. Yeah. Um, in terms of managing the team and looking forward, um, what, what are the broader plans? Because obviously this is a 50 acre site, We've got nice neighbours, which is always helpful. But in terms of feeding other species in here, there are opportunities. Absolutely. Um, imagine, you know, when this is largely water across here, um, stalk perhaps, the sound of water vole. But first, you know, we're going to start changing the structure. Uh, with our diggers, then we'll change the sort of smaller details in the biodiversity of the plants, which will then support the voles, which will then support the bigger species like the storks that we'll love to see walking through here. Just be honest with you, by the time you've done your work in here this summer, it's going to be, look a bit like a construction site, isn't it? <laughs> it is, but it's incredible how fast things bounce back. Um, and yeah, by next spring, we're going to be really seeing some interesting changes. Yeah. A lot of the work that's going to be done here, the inaugural work, is going to be big uh, and it's going to be potentially messy. It's going to involve diggers like this. Now, what we envisage is a number of scrapes, ponds. We'd like the idea of bringing some of that river out into this meadow. And that involves moving quite a lot of soil. And you want to get all of this done now, basically. When it's dry, when it's not too muddy, all of the tough work needs to be done at the top of the project. Imagine that I was to ask you to dig um, 10, I mean, let's say like, yeah, 10, 12 um, scrapes of about 40 or 50 metres by 20 metres wide, just off the top of my head. How long is that going to take? I suppose roughly, you're probably looking at a good month to six weeks worth of, worth of work. It's always a lot longer than people imagine, isn't it? Oh, it's not, yeah, it's definitely not a day or two, you know, playing around in a digger. And you've got a working window because that's not winter work, is it? Not when this is muddy and, and, and underwater, clearly. Yeah, this work we do in the summer months when it's a lot drier. Yeah, the impact on the land is a lot less of moving machinery, moving masses amount of soil or material. My thought is that we do all that heavy lifting as, as rapidly as possible, because once it's done, we don't, you don't want to be bringing that machinery back onto the site, because by then it's hopefully it's regenerating and growing and you don't want to be crushing it. No, you don't want to be revisiting sites. Yeah, it's kind of big impact quickly step back, let kind of nature to do its thing from there on. And the other thing is obviously if you dig a hole, you're taking soil out, you've got to do something with that soil. And here we're not going to be exporting it off site. So you've got to think about where you're going to put that. There's two, two things going on at once. One, you might be digging a pond or a scrape, but somewhere you're making a bank. There's some natural depressions through the land as well. So we could utilize infilling and kind of making a complex wetland effectively. Um, and spreading that material around where, where necessary. Yeah, I might ask for a go. You can have a go if you like. I've never had a go in one of those, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, or actually, I'll defer and leave it to the experts. I, I like this place, don't you? I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's a wonderful place. It's got so much possibility that you know, when you look at the green field, you get the experts that we've got involved involved as well and suddenly realise what it can become. It's really exciting. And what I like is that a lot of people are going to gaze out there and they're going to think, look at that, that's beautiful. That's great for nature, that is. And we're about to attack it with a load of earth moving equipment and it's going to look radically different. But all the while we know it's going to be getting better. And in a few years time, this will be transformed. That's really what we're hoping for. This is the one site I'm involved with, which in a couple of years' time 
you'll actually see dramatic process. And you were saying about the green field, really all I see here is an industrial landscape where it's been what they call improved grassland for sheep and it looks very green and natural and lovely but it's really holding back what this place could be. Yeah, the soil's been compacted. There's, I mean, we've, we've taken a look into the ground here. It's not a pretty picture, but that's something that we can start working on. I, I love the idea of re-wetting it all as well, because clearly this would have been a wet meadow. The river's right here. It would have been spreading out into this meadow. So re-wetting it is, uh, you know, something that we can get on with, and wet meadows are a rarity now. That's very much why we got involved with the site, um, because it is so rare to have grassland that isn't this industrial bowling alley green grass. It's nice having the river as well, the river's beautiful. Isn't oh, it? the river just adds to it. You know, we've got woodland at the back, we've got grassland in the middle, hedge or woodland, riparian edge, and then the water. Stick a mountain in the middle of it, we've got everything. <laughs> Again, we're starting with otter and beaver and kingfisher and grey wagtail and dipper, and we saw beautiful demersal today. You know, I saw an orange tip flitting by as well. There's a lot of stuff here, or probably just over there, which can colonise pretty quickly. Certainly my favourite, peewits. Peewits. Are you familiar to the peewits? Yeah. Um, lapwings. Yes, lapwings. Imagine getting those back here. That's, yeah. God, it'd be something. Um, You've set us our mission. I need to be standing here at some stage, X years hence, passing you my binoculars, and we both gaze out there at a lapwing with its little curly crest. That'd be something. That would be, that would make me a happy man. Excellent. Chris, I'm going to play devil's advocate. You know, why should we care? Why, why are we going to go to all of this trouble? Why are we going to dig ponds and ditches and scrapes and, you know, help that woodland out? What, what's it all for? What's it all for? Partly, this is a very, very tiny piece of Devon. When you take it down, it will be some small part of a percentage. But um, since the Second World War, we've industrialised farming to the point that we've taken wildlife away not only is this about giving it back, it's about showing people how they can bring wildlife back. I think there's an awful lot of support from the public for wildlife, for rewilding. Um, I just happen to be in a privileged position that I can deliver that.